Hi everyone, my name is Dave Luza and today I'm talking to you about Teotihuacan. In Teotihuacan, players are representing noble families who try to be the best at building and decorate the temple of the gods. There's a lot going on, but I'll try to give it to you in small chunks so it might be easier to understand. First off, every player starts with three workers and the workers are dice, but you don't have to roll those dice. No, they start as a level one, so with the one pip on the top, and every time they perform an action, they might level up to level two, three, four, uh, if they turn from level 5 to level 6, they get a special bonus action, but then they die and come back as a level 1. But they get bonuses for that, but we'll get into that later. So you've got your workers on the board, and they're moving around one to three spots in a clockwise motion. And wherever they stop, that's the place they can take an action. And the actions are pretty basic. Three different action spaces tell you how to get resources. The higher the die you put on it, the highest level he has, the more resources you get. And if there are even more dice already at that spot, then you'll get an even better action for it, gaining more resources. Once you have enough resources, well, you can go into construction. And in construction, is you use the resources you gathered before and pay them to put another tile on top of the temple. This will give you points and maybe some other bonuses that I'll tell you in a second. You could also choose to take resources, gold, and decorate the temple. These are good things because every time you either construct or decorate, you are helping the pyramid to be built and you move up on the pyramid track. The game is played over a period of three ages, or as the game calls it, eclipses. And at the end of all those eclipses, stuff happens, you get bonus points, but most of all you'll see who is on top of the pyramid track, who's been working the hardest this eclipse. That person gets four extra points, and the rest will get four, three, or two points, depending on which eclipse it is. So you get less points if you work on a pyramid in a later eclipse. I have already talked about five of the eight different action spaces. Three of them, you'll gain resources, and one of them is to construct and one is to decorate. Well, there is another space that is the alchemy action space. Here you can learn a special technology that can help you during the game that makes the different actions on the other spaces better. The next action space I want to talk to you about, action space number seven on my list, and that is the palace. In the palace, you cannot really take a basic action. You can only do something that I haven't talked to you about, and that is worshipping. Sometimes when you come onto an action space, there is a sidebar that lets you do something else than that action space, namely worshipping. <laughs> when you worship, it has a little key on it, mean, meaning that if you put a worker there, he is locked in. He can no longer move and he can only release him when you pay for it. Pay for it with Coco. More about Coco a little bit later on. Most of them have to do with the power, the strength, the level of the dice that you put on it. The last action space is where you pay two wood to commemorate the dead. There is a death track in the game to commemorate the people who died while building this pyramid. This includes your own dice once they hit level 6. Every time that happens, you move up that track. But also, every time you build one of those commemoration houses, you go up. And at the end of an eclipse, you there's a special system going on. You'll get as many points for each step you are on that track, depending on the last house that is built. So that's all action spaces. Now we're going to talk about cacao. Coco is money in this game. Every time you want to take an action, but there are already dice on that spot, even if they are yours, you need to pay one Coco for each color dice that is already there. And that also means that sometimes you're out of Coco. What you could do then is go to a place that already has a bunch of those different colored dice and not take an action. And then you will receive as many Coco as there are different colored dice there, plus one. Coco is important because at the end of an eclipse, you also need to feed the people. You'll need one food for each die that is between level one and level three. And if they're level four or five, you need two food for each of those dice. One thing I haven't talked about yet is the temple track. There are three different temples, red, 
green and blue. And sometimes you'll receive as a bonus or as an action a step on one of these temples that will give you either random resources or cocoa or points. And the higher you get, the better the rewards are. Sometimes you receive a bonus style that might need to be paid for. Gather it and use it whenever you need it. And if you manage to get to the top of one of the temples, you'll also get an amazing amount of points at the end of the game. So when you land on an action space, you can do one of three things. First off, you can take cocoa. If you don't have any to pay for it or you just need cocoa, you'll, you'll get as many cocoa as there are different colored dice plus one. Second possibility is you take the action. You pay the cocoa if there are already workers there and then you take it and then you receive the bonus and mostly that will involve your dice leveling up. The third one is that when you take a worship action and then he goes onto this little sideboard. It doesn't matter if there are dice on the action space. Maybe there is one on that worship action. If there is, you need to pay one Coco and kick him off into the base area of that action space. Most of those actions lets you choose between two actions. One is a worship, level up on one of those temples, and then you can pay one Coco to do the other action as well. And that mostly involves a bonus card, which you maybe have to pay for as well. The rule book is very clear. If you take an action, first you need to pay for all the actions that you're doing before you get the bonuses. So that means, first I need to kick someone out of this spot and pay a Coco. Then I wanna do both of the actions on that spot. I have to pay a Coco. And one of those action spots tells me, receive this bonus card and pay another Coco. So I need to have three Coco before I do the action. And then I might get more Coco, but the rule book is pretty clear about that. What happens when one of your dice reaches level six? Well, he dies, I said it before, or like the game wants to call it, he ascends, he goes up. That means you get one step on the avenue of the dead, the death track, you move up one of those steps right over there, maybe get a bonus for that. But then you can also choose between food, points, or another step on one of the temple tracks, or maybe pay three Coco and get two of those steps or you can get another worker that will start as a level three and he will also give you two food, two cocoa already. And once you've chosen the bonus you'd like to receive, he goes back to the palace, which is like the base starting point. You win the game by having the most points at the end. Duh. But how do you get those points? Most of them are handed out at the end of one of the three eclipses. Points will go to people who have participated in decorating and constructing the pyramid. During the first eclipse, you get four points for each step on that track. In the second, you get three points and the last eclipse only gives you two points per step on the pyramid track. You will also get points for each step you've taken on the death track, the avenue of the dead. This track does not reset after each eclipse and each step on this track will reward you an amount of points that gets less as well, depending on the houses that are built. You'll lose points if you're unable to feed your people. For each Coco you're missing, you lose three points. During the game, there are different spots where you'll get bonus tiles. Bonus tiles give you a bonus during the game that you can take whenever you want. And some of them are masks. There are seven different masks in the game. And if you manage to collect a lot of different ones, you'll get more and more points for them at the end of every eclipse. So start collecting them soon. Something else that is worth mentioning, if you're constructing the pyramid or decorating it, then you'll have those tiles with those symbols on it. You can get bonus points and even steps on the temple if you're connecting the symbols on top with the symbols underneath. So you need to plan ahead and see if there are some bonuses that you can receive that way. The last thing I want to talk to you about before I'll tell you what I think of the game is time or the eclipses and how they work. You've got two markers, the white one and the black one. The white one is moving towards the black one and once they meet, we have an eclipse. Every time everyone had a turn around the table, you move that white one one step. So pretty linear. But every time one of the dice reaches level six and ascends, time moves as well. So that decreases the time you had. So that's it. That's the rules to Teotihuacan. 
Teotihuacan. Oh well, you know what I mean, the city of gods. If you feel I made some rules, goofs, please let me know. And if you have some questions about the rules, just put them in the comments and I'll try to help you out there. The game is designed by the same designers as Tolkien. And I did not like Tolkien very much. I thought it was very hard for me to see how good my action would be if my worker would stay one turn longer on the track. But I did like this game. I think it's very straightforward. You can always see what's gonna happen. The only thing that might change is that someone before you will do the action that you wanted to do. It doesn't matter because you can still do it, but it costs you one cacao more, one cocoa more. What I really like about the game is that you can really set yourself up for an amazing turn and combos and combos and combos because every time you do something special you'll get bonuses here and there and you'll move up the track there and you'll be able to get a tile there. I really like that. The game comes with a pre-printed board, which is amazing. It's a great game if you play it like that. But if you want more replayability, then you have some of the action spaces that you can move around. You can shuffle them and have them in a different order, which will totally change the game. You've got the bonus tiles. They are, of course, scattered across the board in a different way each time you play the game. You have some extra scoring options that are different. One thing that I kept running into while playing the game is that we always forgot to move the turn tracker. And that means the game is longer than you think and you're always wondering, did we move it? Um, if someone has an idea on how to circumvent the problem surrounding that, that would be amazing. I love the artwork of the game. At the beginning, I, when I first looked at it, I thought, mm, it's a little bit blend, where are all those uh, colors? But I feel it's very relaxing to look at the board and to keep looking at the board. Uh, it's very clear that it's all about those big action spaces and the rest is just nice to have there. One thing that I would like to have added on it is that on action 7 and 8, the decoration and the construction tiles, I would love it if there was, was some kind of marker that says don't forget to move your marker one space up the pyramid track. I just would love to have one I don't know, an icon there. I really like the look and feel of the pyramid tiles. They're nice, big and chunky, and you really got the feeling that you're building something. The decoration tiles, however, are a little bit small and fiddly, and what I don't like is that there's a little arrow on it, indicating that it this side should always point towards the pyramid. But that means that sometimes they're just bad if they're not the right icons, people will just stop decorating it because they don't get a bonus, they don't get an extra step. I wish that I don't see why we are not allowed to just flip them, however. Maybe I'll house rule that one. So my final opinion is this is an amazing game. I'm very happy that I own it now and I will continue playing it. I have played it with different groups and different kinds of people. The heavy thinkers, they really have something in their hands here. They, they've got enough to think about. But also uh, Ilka, my wife, we play two player games and we are not overthinking uh, the game, but still are enjoying it because it's very clear what you want to do. So a big recommendation from me for Teotihuacan, City of Gods. My name is Dave Luza. Thanks for watching. See you next time.